Hello, I'm Charles Johnson. I'd like you to know a little bit about my life. It all started when I was born circa 1845 in Georgia. I am full-blooded Choctaw Native American. My father was Charles Johnson, senior. My father said, said son, we people of the Africa region were here at least 14,000 years before anybody else. He said that he heard it was a wonderful place like heaven on earth. The ancestors of living Native Americans arrived in what is now the United States at least 15,000 years ago, possibly much earlier, from Africa via Beringia. A vast variety of peoples, societies and cultures subsequently developed. European colonization of the Americas, which began in 1492, resulted in a precipitous decline in Native American population because of new diseases, wars, ethnic cleansing, and enslavement. After its formation, the United States, as part of its policy of settler colonialism, continued to wage war and perpetrated massacres against many Native American peoples, removed them from their ancestral lands, and subjected them to one-sided treaties and to discriminatory government policies, later focused on forced assimilation, into the 20th century. Native American self-determination movements have resulted in positive changes to the lives of many Native Americans, though there are still many contemporary issues faced by them. Today, there are over 5 million Native Americans in the United States, 78% of whom live outside reservations, California, Arizona and Oklahoma have the largest populations of Native Americans in the United States. Most Native Americans live in small towns or rural areas. I married my sweetheart Savannah. She was born circa 1840 in Georgia. Her occupation was a laundress. We had one son. Our son Solomon was born in 1866. He married Melissa Simmons in 1889. I lived in Columbia County, Georgia in 1870. I did not want to go to no reservation. I have always been free so I moved with my people the black people who just become free. When the United States was created, established Native American tribes were generally considered semi-independent nations as they generally lived in communities separate from white settlers. The federal government signed treaties at a government-to-government -government level until the Indian Appropriations Act of 1871 ended recognition of independent native nations and started treating them as domestic dependent nations subject to applicable federal laws. This law did preserve the rights and privileges agreed to under the treaties, including a large degree of tribal sovereignty. For this reason, many Native American reservations are still independent of state law and the actions of tribal citizens on these reservations are subject only to tribal courts and federal law, often differently applicable to tribal lands than to U.S. state or territory by exemption, exclusion, treaty, or superseding tribal or federal law. The Indian Citizenship Act of 1924 granted U.S. citizenship to all Native Americans born in the United States who had not yet obtained it. This emptied the Indians not taxed category established by the United States Constitution, allowed natives to vote in state and federal elections, and extended the 14th Amendment protections granted to people subject to the jurisdiction of the United States. However, some states continued to deny Native Americans voting rights for several decades. A. Savannah and I had nine lovely grandchildren, Joseph, Isaiah, Anna, Dinah, Elvira, Solomon, my patients, Charlie and James. I'm glad I could share my deep story with you. I hope you enjoyed watching. Farewell, love and kisses. Remember family we are always with you make a pyramid with your fingers and thumbs close your eyes and talk to us and don't be surprised because we will answer and tell you the good right thing to do. Hotep. Family.